Uh, hello and welcome to this onboarding webinar for the T level in education and childcare. We'll be starting soon. Can I please continue the sound check? I know some people are having some sound problems. If you haven't already done so, please put a comment in the chat box to let me know that you can hear me okay. I've got Molly here, our cornerstone backbone um, of, of the department, monitoring the chat box and doing some um, doing some admin checks for us. So. Uh, if you let Molly know that you can hear us, that would be wonderful. Um, you'll find the chat box at the bottom of the Go Training control panel at the right of your screen. And thank you to everybody who's telling us that they can hear us. I'm going to continue on because we've got quite a lot to get through this afternoon. So my name's Helen Scanlon. I'm the Curriculum Officer for T-Levels. My role is to support centres through the planning, onboarding and CPD processes for NCFE cash qualifications with a focus on promoting and advancing learning. If you haven't met me yet, I've got many years experience in teaching, learning and assessment across a range of levels with different types of qualifications and for different types of organisation. I've been meeting and working with the management, deliv delivery and assessment staff from our T-level centres, exploring and discussing the challenges the qualification has presented and identifying strategies to overcome them, specifically related to teaching and learning. Today's session follows on from the induction session delivered earlier this academic year and the objectives of today's session include a reflection on progress to date, an exploration of the issues encountered with delivery, some resource updates, a consideration of the quality assurance processes for the qualification and I'll be signposting you to other events and webinars. I'm extra pleased to be joined today by Janet King, one of our T-level sector managers and the subject specialist for education and childcare. Janet should be able to answer any subject specific questions which are asked. Uh, hello, Janet, is your sound working this afternoon? Right, she's, she's going to contact us through the chat box, so I'll just keep going. This session is going to last approximately one hour and it's designed to be workshop style. I'm going to provide some updates from NCFE, but the focus of the session will be on participants sharing their experiences to date. As Janet and I run through the slides, we'll need you to assess when and where our points and ideas relate to your own delivery and experiences. Can I just ask you for the moment to pop yourself onto mute to minimise background noise and disruptions? I will be asking you to put your microphones back on once we move into the breakout rooms. I'll be asking you to share a challenge your centre has encountered and how you've overcome it. I'll then be asking someone from each breakout room to summarise their group's discussions and ideas when we return to the whole group feedback section. This is what would happen naturally in a face-to-face -face session, so I'd like to structure this part of the session to allow you to share your ideas and strategies. We'd also like to encourage you to ask questions using the chat box. You'll find this at the bottom of the right-hand side of the go-to training uh, control panel. It's on the right of your screen. So to summarise, the session will be recorded and the link will be made available. Any questions not answered today will be followed up with the relevant staff members after the event. Also, please remember that questions are encouraged. All sound settings should be on mute for the moment to avoid the background noise and feedback. An evaluation will be deployed on completion of the webinar and we encourage you to, feed, to complete this short survey to help in, to us to improve and develop a PPD offer. We're going to be running a feedback poll be used during the session to gauge opinions and views. And it's really important that you share your experiences and strategies with each other in the breakout room and feedback activities. Okay, to get us started, I'm going to start with a, a question in the poll. Um, in relation to the teaching and learning of education and childcare T-level, what has been the biggest challenge you've had to date? I'm going to launch the poll for you now. Uh, please choose the most relevant answer, and if your challenge isn't one of the options, please choose other and share it in the chat box instead. I'm going to leave that poll open for a minute or two um, to allow everyone to share their views. Thank you. Gemma, that's an excellent point. I like it lots. Uh, it is a shame you can't have more than one, but uh, try and go for the 
for the biggest for the moment. Thanks for that, Susie. You're saying you haven't started yet. You're delivering in September. Okay, that's great. I mean, you're going to learn a lot from your colleagues here on the on the webinar. I'm just going to give it a, a few more seconds to, to allow you to pop your answer in. And as I say, if you choose other, um, please pop it in the chat box. I've noticed that people are starting to do that. So thank you for that. This is going to be most useful to help us support you, you, you guys um, as providers to inform what we do in our CPD sessions and what we, um, what we pass on to other departments as an advocate for, for you guys. Um, so I'm just going to quickly have a look at the, some of the others. Um, thanks, Fiona. Being confident that we are delivering to the required depth and breadth and, the, and prep for exam. Yeah, that, that, that is one that comes up quite a bit with the, um, the breadth and depth of the, of the qual spec. So yes, thank you for that. Uh, Kay, biggest definitely changes on a weekly basis, yes. So each week you'll have a different challenge. Uh, that's excellent. Well, it's not excellent, but thank you for that, Kay. Um, you're going uh, to be very responsive, I know you are. So Rachel, the pace of the course very fast. Yes, there's a lot to get through. And that's why some centres have decided to go for the, uh, the later exam window um, instead. So I'm going to close that poll now and just share the, the results with everybody so you can see uh, what everybody else said. So as you can see, there's, there's a bit of a range there. Um, these are the uh, challenges that I've been informed and asked about over the past few months. So this is where the ideas came from. Um, but yes, I'm sure that it changes all the time. Um, but great, thank you. As I say, this is all going to be recorded and shared and used to inform further sessions. So I'm just going to hide that now and keep going. As I say, I've asked Molly to keep an eye on the on the chat box. So as questions and points arise, we can we can see them. So Nita hasn't started teaching yet. Okay, it's starting to live in September. Thank you. Janet, can you hear us now, Janet? Is everything good with the sound? Everything's good, thank you. Just had a few technicals there, but lovely <laughs> to be here. Thanks, Helen. <laughs> Brilliant, thanks a lot, Janet, that's great. Uh, Rebecca, a great pace, um, especially if you're aiming for the May and June exams, absolutely. Caroline, preparing for the depth and breadth of exams. Um, I will come back to preparing for exams later on in today's session. Um, challenges. Carry on, thank you. Challenges navigated as we go. Teaching staff agree. Great deal of content to get through. Um, yes, and it's a challenge they are tackling. Well done. Excellent. Thank you so much for that. Okay. Um, this slide highlights what we're going to be asking you to do a little later in the session in the breakout rooms. Um, please consider the questions and use them as the basis of your chat room discussions. So you'll have access to these questions in the breakout rooms too. For those who aren't delivering yet, I would say try and think about what you think the challenge is going to be for yourselves. Um, and so that you can ask the other centres how they have overcome the, the challenges that they've already been, um, been overcoming, to be honest. So uh, those questions will be available in the session. Thanks a lot, Kate. You'll see the, um, the recording when we finish. So our first area of focus for today is progress to date. From our perspective, we'd like to share the findings of meetings and contact with T-level centre staff so far. Uh, we must start by sharing how positive and exciting the commencement of recruitment and delivery of the programme has been. Centres have embraced the new qualification extremely well and the positive attitudes of staff have resulted in an excellent experience for their students. So running through these bullet points, all centres are up and running, having planned their curriculum in a way that suits their context and students. In a very challenging environment, we must share how impressed we are with the first term's work. We've seen some very positive approaches in relation to assessment and teaching and learning. Thorough initial assessment and induction activities have served centres well, and starting with high expectations has also set the scene well. Centres who have engaged with their curriculum consultations have shared best practice and received support and guidance from NCFE staff in learning resources from the assessment and quality assurance teams and of course Janet, the sector specialist for the T-level in education and childcare. 
We therefore encourage centre staff to continue to get the most out of the advice, support and guidance the consultations offer. So far, we've delivered CPD sessions on the themes of planning for delivery, initial assessment and induction, formative assessment, stretch and challenge, and developing English skills in T-levels. We have, we, have, we have been asked for interactive sessions, and I must thank the staff who have engaged with this approach. We need to continue this collaborative approach to allow centre staff to communicate with and support each other, and all future sessions will have aspects of collaboration and interaction in them. I'll talk about future plans for CPD later in this webinar. We also have facilitated and provided bespoke support and meetings. Please contact us if you'd like to explore this option for your centre. In the current climate, it's evident that the majority of T-level students are responding extremely well to adaptations and delivery. We've also discussed individual challenges to remote learning with centres and made suggestions for further improvement and development. The Institute's relaxation and placement hours information was welcomed and we've spoken to some centres about the impact of this and how they should adapt their delivery and curriculum plan with this in mind. Please contact Janet or myself if you have any questions related to this. T-level staff have demonstrated a keenness to learn more to inform their teaching, learning and assessment practice. Innovation has been needed and we've been extremely impressed with the attitude of all staff involved. Working towards the new core exams and employer set project, plan formative assessment activities, recording of student progress, and using that information gathered to plan individual targets and learning activities is vital. There is some excellent practice and we'd just like you to share it with each other as much as possible. Janet, from a subject specialist perspective, is there anything you'd like to add? I don't think so, Helen. I think you've got that you've got that covered. I think um I would echo the the um the sort of collaboration and the exchange of information. It's been absolutely fantastic to work with people. Um and we've got such a lot from it, haven't we, Helen, in, in terms of moving things forward and supporting and that's because of the openness and that really strong feeling of collaboration, which um I'm very grateful for. So yeah, great. Yeah, absolutely, Janet. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the best thing as a teacher is to talk to other teachers and find out how they're getting on, even if um, you feel like you're in a silo sometimes in an organisation, don't you? If you're in a small team and it's a new qualification and then you have staff sickness mm. and all the restrictions that we've got. So, so yes, we're trying to um, manage and uh, promote networking in everything we do. Lovely. So I'm going to now move on to sharing some of the issues encountered with delivery of the T-level qualifica qualification. And first of all, from my generic curriculum perspective, for industry placements, we've got some started and some yet to, with no definite date set for a start with some centres. Um, and try to encourage students who are yet to start their placement to review and analyse the underpinning knowledge they're gaining on programme and how it would might or would apply in practice. In the new world of online or remote learning, teachers have had to learn the skills in real time and adapt their delivery techniques accordingly. What we've seen is some excellent and innovative practice. Online learning moving forward is probably going to stay with us in some shape or form, so the skills and knowledge gained now should be of use in the future. This is a new qualification with new specifications and assessments. Uh, these have brought understandable concerns, but we'd like to reassure you that you you know your subjects and students well, so you should be more than capable of adapting your practice in line with the new content and the end assessment activities, which leads us to the extension of the age in the core content. Older students being included in the age range is new, but shouldn't be unfamiliar as your T-level students are in this new range. We suggest that you review the approaches you use with them in relation to T-level teaching, learning and assessment, and explain these andragogical approaches. Summative assessments, the new exams and employer set project. Staff have concerns about the new methods and are facilitating the learning activities which will prepare their students for May and June 2021. These concerns have informed CPD session content in the new year and we would encourage staff to access these sessions in January. I'm now going to ask Janet to give her subject specific view on these points. Thank you. Thanks, Helen. And I think the first thing is there's been so much going on this year and it's an absolute celebration of your teaching and learning skills. The people that are on this call today, an absolute celebration of your flexibility, of your agility, 
sort of overcoming um, those challenges and remaining um, student-centered is an absolute um, an absolute challenge that you have, you have risen to and, and all credit goes to you so thank you for that and um, I will mention briefly industry placements I think that has been um, an just an unbelievable challenge from um, early year settings and, and childcare settings that have sort of blocked students going in completely to others where there's been um, limited access or um, even normal day-to-day -day access. So we've had the whole, the whole sort of um, extremities of it and, and that's been difficult. Changes, of course, in relation to the specification and the role of the assessor that will, that will be seen evolving through that occupational specialism in terms of um, marking and, and giving a grade for those structured observations um, is something that will feel different and something that um, I'm sure we'll be able to, to support you with. I know we'll be able to support you with and please don't hesitate in asking about that because that is going to feel different um, and there'll also be CPD sessions um, I am sure around that role of the assessor as well. So that's going to feel different. The other things that feel different that, um, that Helen has already touched upon really is, is the fact that you know we've got we're moving from this modular approach to a linear approach and um, the way that assessment is coming at the end it's feeling it's feeling different we're preparing for exams I've said it before but I will say again your students will do well um, and when you see your students achieving I think it's then that there's another sort of layer of confidence that will that will come but um, the way that you're engaging with this qualification the feedback that we're getting the encouraging feedback that we're having and that sense of of collaboration and support and networking and and, and you know we are we are all learning we're all listening we're, we're all in this new mindset together and what we what we all want what's the thread through all of that is is that we want our students to do well and we want the early year sector and the childcare sector to flourish and to be the best it possibly can be and I think there's nothing more that we could do to be trying to fulfill that aim together so um, yes it feels slightly different in places yes there are challenges um, that have been impacted by greater challenges that are happening around the world but this qualification is is making um, foundations and it is and it is um, it is going to blossom because of the hard work that you're doing so thank you for that and thanks Helen brilliant thanks so much Janet that's wonderful okay well now I'm going to move on to the t-level resources the core resources for themes one to five have now all been released and are available on Qualhub as part of our essential or free offer for themes one to five, we've provided access to 40 complimentary session packs covering some of the key topic areas across the themes. These include session plans, lesson activities, e-learning modules, home study activities, revision and study sessions. The additional resources, in addition, in addition to the essential resources, we've developed a further 143 session packs, including over 280 hours of e-learning content directly aligned to the requirements of the new technical qualifications. All details of those are available on Qualhub. For the occupational specialisms, the individual blended learning sessions for the occupational specialism are currently under development and we will advise timelines for release in the new year. The schemes of work for the occupational specialisms were released in July of this year to support session planning of the T-level year two. There are also tutor activity packs available on Qualhub for EYE and ET, which are a part of our Essentials Resources offer. The Curriculum and Learning Resources team have collaborated to record a CPD session related to getting the most out of the T-level education and childcare resources. It's now available on our YouTube channel. The link to it is shown on the screen now. Hodder's textbook is due for publication in March. Please also see the resources on Qualhub. I've included a link to Hodder's website and where you'll probably find the section related to T-level resources developments useful and informative. If you'd like any support or guidance related to any of these resources, please get in touch with us. I'm now going to move on to the quality assurance update. On the screen now is confirmation of the dates linked to quality assurance. 
I've included these important dates and although they're quite a way away in the future, it's probably useful to plan your work with them in mind. I've also included some links. These are to the policies and documents section for the call where you'll find the up-to-date policy documents and forms you'll need. There's also a link to the recording of the administration webinar the quality assurance team did, which is also worth reviewing if you haven't seen it. I'm just going to pause in case there are any questions that we need to answer, so just pause on this slide for a second. Thanks for your question, Nita. You're asking about the link to the resources. If you're an NCFE centre, when you log on to our Qual Hub portal, all of the resources are there. You can email me for specific um, support and guidance if, if you want to. Thanks for your question there, Kay, about the ESP. I'm going to follow that up directly with Janet before um, the end of this session, and we'll follow it up after, afterwards if we can't answer it in full today. Uh, I'll, I'll, if anyone has asked about elements one to five are covered, any news on further resources for element 10 and 11? So when I said, when you say one to five, it's themes one to five. I'm not sure if, you, if you're aware how the, the themes have been created to cover all, all of the elements. So um, elements one to 12 are covered in the themes one to five. Okay, that's great. No, no questions, a silly question. Thank you for asking that, it's wonderful. Okay, it's now over to you for a discussion in smaller groups about the challenges you've faced and the strategies you've used to overcome them. I'm going to put you into smaller groups to allow you to network and learn from each other's experiences. Janet and I will not facilitate this section, we'd like you to take the lead. So please unmute your microphones and have some meaningful discussions, just as you would benefit from doing if we were together face to face. Once we're all back in the larger group, I'll be asking one member of each breakout room to summarise your discussions so that everyone can benefit. You'll find a document in the breakout room showing the questions we'd like you to discuss. And if you're able to, please add some comments or ideas on the form which we share with everyone after the session. This should probably take 15 minutes or so. I'll let everyone know when we're coming back together. But um, we're still going to encourage people asking questions via the chat book. So just take me uh, a couple of minutes just to put you into these rooms. <laughs> Thanks, Emma. Okay, so everyone should be going into the breakout rooms now.
Right, I've come out of A, they're all talking quite nicely. Jump in the B. Let's come out of B. I'm going to go into C now.
gone. Okay. <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right, is everybody back together now? Okay. Yeah. Well, um, I'll um, yeah. I'll mute myself. <laughs> Bye. Right. Yes. There is. Um, I'm Bye. just saying, I, pop, I popped into each of the four breakout rooms there, and everybody was having such meaningful um, discussions. I'm so so thrilled that you got the chance to do that. So I'm going to ask for breakout room A first of all to share. Um, just a summary of what you talked about. Anyone from breakout room A there? Um, shall I shall I go? <laughs> Sorry. Yes, it, please. Uh, we talked about the challenges of placement um, and and um, the challenges of assessment as well. So um, we were sharing different different ways that we've overcome that. So um, right, what, just give us a, an overview of what type of things you've used, please. So um, the group, a couple of people in the group have been doing um, mini like exams and mini and project right. projects to try and yeah. uh, for the assessment. And then in terms of placement, we were talking about um, looking at schools rather than nurseries or nurseries rather than schools, depending on your area, which which will support um, getting into placement. Um, we do block placements, but not everybody does. And that seems to have worked quite well for us. Um, yeah. Students in placement. I think that was kind of it, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, I recognize your voice, but I can't put a name to it. It's Michelle, Michelle Young. Where from Michelle? Fairham, Fairham College. Lovely. Thank you so much. Thanks. Brilliant. Thanks a lot for that, Michelle, you star. Uh, breakout room B, I know you were writing lots in your form. Can you share, somebody share some of your strategies? Yeah, I'll go. <laughs> Thank you. Who um, is it? It's Rachel Byrne from East Sussex College Group in Eastbourne. Lovely. Thank you, Rachel. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. You? Yes, I'm great. Thank you. What good. kind of uh, things did you share? Yeah, so we were more looking like uh, Michelle's just mentioned, we were looking at the formative assessments really um, and looking at how to mark them. So it's okay creating formative assessments, but it's more about how do we mark them? What do we gauge as a benchmark? Yes. Um, some people have been looking at the practice tests as I had, um, and I've been scoring mine sort of similar using similar styles right. um, but it was all about you know we're trial and error is it is it working is it supportive um some people were using more linear grading in the first round to give their students confidence but then obviously the marking is more um sorry the grading is more um narrow in the actual exam itself yes so, it's it's not having enough support in that area really with the marking of our formative that's where we got to yeah um, i've made a note of that rachel i think that's a really good thing for janet and i to have a look at together mm, definitely yeah. um it was good to hear that not one of us had really found the answer um mm -hmm. we were all supporting each other with what we were doing but nobody had a concrete answer to a system that was really thorough. Um, we were also talking about the cash resources. Some, mm -hmm. some of us have got them and some people haven't. Um, mm -hmm. And we were Are saying- Are these the additional resources, Rachel? Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. Were, we were talking about, you know, what's really good about them and what's not so good about them. Yeah. So um, one, one good positive thing was it keeps you on track and you can gauge your depth of your lessons according right, to the yes. cash resources. Yes. But the negative was the um, the online tools. You can't just share one of them with students. You need to share them all. Right. Um, because it's so clunky. Uh, we've had quite a lot of problems putting them on our systems. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that's... It, the two common trends we were talking about. Yeah, I'm just making notes because I I am going to share um, feedback with the resources teams. Uh, yeah, 
Excellent. Thank you so much for that. Um, Rachel, you're a superstar. Um, in Group C, can somebody tell us your discussion in Group C, please? Is that us? I think I'm Group C, Penny. Penny, hello Penny, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. And Where are you we, based, Penny? Oxbridge in London. Brilliant, thank you. Go on, fire away. Um, we basically, it's so interesting because I think we're all going, listening to the feedback, everybody's going through the same issues and I think that's quite interesting because we're obviously all doing it the same way and yes. it's just little things that need tweaking. Um, certainly, as Group B said, the resources are so difficult to manage. They're so small on the screen. The students yeah. can't see them. The students don't like them. Um, they, I think as well, they've been used to dynamic learning and their setup of that, which has been quite easy for us to put onto Google Classroom, etc. And I yeah. think that's that's kind of has been the main the main problem. We we're, we're doing the exam thing, setting up that same thing. And I did suggest to our um, breakout room that perhaps we share some of these exams between us, so that Absolutely. we're not it's not such hard work for us all working nights and trying to Absolutely. do them. <laughs> and I've said this to a lot of centres as well. But get the students to write the exams as well and mark them as well. It shouldn't be you spending your whole life doing outside of work. So yes. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, I'll let someone else speak. <laughs> Thanks, Penny. Anything else from Group C? I know one thing I did hear is they would like people would like a wider range of resources. They seem a bit samey. Um, there's a bit of repetition. So that that is one thing I'm going to take uh, to the team as well. So uh, Group D then. I know this is the group that Janet was in. Hi, uh, I don't mind talking. My name's Hello, Kate good. from Milton College. From which college, Kate, from sorry, Kate? Milton Keynes. Lovely. Hello, Kate. Are you well? Hi. The ladies I spoke to were like fonts of knowledge. They were amazing. Obviously, they were so helpful. Uh, we're not running it until September next year, and we were talking about placement and how many days a week or how many block weeks they were um, putting yeah. their students out in. Because I've seen on another webinar that um, their teams were only put their students out in the second year of the course. So I was just wondering how they were going to get the right amount of hours to be able to do that, but. The ladies said that theirs were going out weekly and with block weeks as well, which is what yes, we were there's, planning. There's, a, there's an absolute mixture of everything. And some of the benefits I've, I've heard when students aren't at placement yet is that it's making them less blinkered and less focused on just the context they're in. They're not in an industry placement yet. They can't apply it to real practice, but they yeah. can be more evaluative across across the sector and across the range of placements that they might have. So um, yes, some, some placements start kind of week one, some placements have no start date at all yet, uh, and some centres can and are making the decision to start the placements in year, in year two, which is fine, it's whatever works in, you know, in, in the individual contexts and for the individual students. And of course, we're very much reliant on the employers taking students, so Yes, it's it's a bit of a um, it's a mixture of approaches because of of need. No, they were very very helpful. I think we we've, we've planned ours to go out two days a week with additional block week. That's what we were hoping to do, just so yeah. they can get like they can have an opportunity to link the theory to practice and try yeah. and get as hands on experience when they can. We also yeah. spoke about entry require. Oh, sorry. Go on. Uh, we also spoke about entry requirements. So I asked if they had included the C. At the four or above in science for those who wanted to go into teaching because that's obviously a requirement at uni right they said they asked the students in like interview questions like what makes them unique and they looked at to see if they were a t-level student so to speak so what kind of experience did they have what other qualifications did they have what else could they bring to the table so that was actually really really helpful for absolutely me, yeah, and doing an, an initial assessment on all the components of the T level, the TQ and the other elements, you know, finding out where the students are at in relation to all of the success parameters, if you like, or goals that they have to achieve. And some centres have set it higher than four, especially because there were CAG grades this year. Um, yeah. 
some you know you're not guaranteed that they they would have got that for so some centers have set them higher than that and they seem to be the ones that have the students that are more successful and luckily centers don't seem to be um pressurized into getting those bums on the seats and it, there's, there are there is less pressure to get large cohorts so having smaller cohorts at the start so that you can get your head around it um, and teach it effectively and get them ready for this new assessment is also possibly another strategy that you might need to take forward um, for your enroll, you know, for your recruitment and enrollment. Um, and then they just gave me some really other really good tips. Um, they're very knowledgeable. I feel really lucky to be in that group. I'm taking what kind off. of tips did you find most useful, Kate? So things like uh, you lose it, using this time to the best of its advantage because we're not to delivering to September. So really yes. get your head around the course, really prepare for yeah. it. Um, they said that we're going to have the textbook out in March and that will give us a good idea of the depth that we need to cover and the mm -hmm. things that we include they also mentioned about the e-resources and how to use those in effect in an effective way and yeah. some really good ideas on formative assessment as well because we currently with btech so we do an assignment at the end of every unit plus the two exams yeah. so i had questions of how how did they get their head around that really because that's at the minute that's a bit of an alien way for us because yeah yeah they, totally yeah. totally understand Jana, was there anything in anything that you heard that you would want to share uh, and it was a really good conversation um, I welcomed the openness and the honesty of people um, and, and you know we, we chatted about various things. I was very good, um, I, I was quiet where I, where I needed to be um, and yeah people were very open and very honest and I think that's the only way to be um, and at, at the end of the day you, you know you, you, you get the most out of the resources and things like that um, from from making sure you're you're in control of them and you're using them in a way that's best for you so I welcomed all the comments um, nothing really to add apart from just to reassure that um, there's 415 there's been a reducement of placement hours if, if you if you weren't aware due to the covid so reduced to 415 for the early years um a hundred of those hours of course can be put towards um planning and supervision and of, of assessment and so on so it's it's kind of down to threshold competence of 315 and that should hopefully help people who are struggling to access placements at the moment in in um in, in these challenging times Lovely. Thanks, thank you Janet yeah that's brilliant thank you and I'm just going to quickly see if I as I say I, I dropped into each of the four rooms and I kept quiet most of the time but you were all having some very meaningful and and and, and excellent conversations so thank you to everybody for that and to follow up from that Fiona's just popped a, a question into the um, chat box about movement on a pos possible forum for different providers to liaise and share I know the account execs have been sharing um contact details between their centers it's 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 hard to manage when um there's such a wide range and when we have some strong centers who are keen to share we don't want to overload them but i'm thinking that this approach for this workshop type session today where we've done some um sharing and some dissemination but had the majority of the time allowing you to talk to each other this could be something that if you wanted we could look into putting on on a regular basis where it is basically a, a drop in to talk to other providers and um, myself and or Janet and others um, to get some advice and guidance to just share um, how things are going etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, Janet there's a message from Caroline about clarifying the number of hours for the cash diploma okay so um for students that are doing um an early years educator qualification that's not t level that might be one of our technical qualifications or a diploma non-technical but but eye um the clear message is please don't worry about the number of hours be more concerned with the competencies and making sure that there is evidence assigned to each of those competencies for the t levels during these challenges you're looking at 315 and um, planning for the 750 but must must meet the 315 and for all of the qualifications the message is don't worry about the number of hours focus on me on, on that making sure you've got evidence against each competence Brilliant, thanks, thanks for that, Janet. Great. Uh, Rachel has said yes, please. Some kind of network regular event would be useful. So I will take that up with um with the relevant people here at NCFE Cash. Um, yeah, Ultra Barrett yes, College would love that as well. Thank you. 
we'd really be out <laughs> really involved in right. it. Well, we'll definitely, all right. I mean, we're having a lot of people saying that was great. Christmas drinks in London, that wouldn't that be lovely, Penny? What that, that would just be a joy, but maybe it's next year, we'll have to get together. So yeah, we will follow up on the remainder of the questions here. Um, and as I say, I'll, I'll talk to the relevant people about the, the network and type workshops, because I'm quite I'm quite willing to, to facilitate that. So this is, we're nearing the end of the webinar, so we're going to talk about signposting to useful sites, etc., and information. I've included links here to the DfE and the Institute's websites, because those are your top level updates. I've also included an image of the NCFE Cash uh, T-Level Education and Childcare Qual Hub site. The areas highlighted with the stars include the delivery and learning support, where you'll find all you'll need to deliver our qualifications and support your learners. The policies and documents section is where you'll find the information and forms I mentioned in the quality assurance section earlier. Finally, the green area highlighted on the left at the bottom of the T-level page is where you'll find the qual spec, the teaching and learning resources, the sample assessments and the exemplification materials. These are being updated and added to on an ongoing basis. So please have a look here if you haven't had a look for a while and get in touch with us if you'd like any support with these. Um, Okay. We're going we to. Can't... Is there a list of them on screen? Because we can't see it. Oh, let me have a quick look. I think the screen sharing has paused. So just bear with me. All right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for highlighting that. So that's the page I've just been talking about. So the top two links are the DFE and the Institute um, websites. And then the three stars on the page are the delivery and learn support, policies and documents, and the, the support materials, call spec and adaptations information. Okay, we're gonna have a, uh, if, I'm gonna finish off of this last slide and then we'll run through the final questions, just, just aware of the time and letting people to, to um, get themselves finished. Um, we've got the dates here for the forthcoming CPD sessions, January onwards. Um, we've got the preparing for exams, and preparing for the ESP sessions in January, differentiation sessions in February, and placement preparation and management in March. I've also uh, included the link here to this further um, booking pages for the for the CPD sessions and um, webinars, etc. I'm going to say uh, thanks again for everybody's input. As I say, we're going to let people go, but we will talk through the, the remaining questions if anyone can stay. I'd like to wish you all the very best for a good Christmas break. I'm going to say goodbye and stay safe from everyone at NCFE. But as I say, we're not going yet. We're going to stay and have a look at some of the questions. If you want to stay, please do. Uh, I'm going to run back to the questions as to where I was up to earlier. Um, so that's the networking, that's now networking. Teaching resources. All right, so Rachel is asking what type of teaching resources um, other centres have bought. Um, I don't know, but it's something that we could ask centres and, and share. Janet, do you know of any other resources that centres have been purchasing? Um, I don't. I, I know that probably using a range of different textbooks in this interim, I were waiting for the Hodder textbook. Um, but the only really information that, that I know is about the about the cash resources. So yeah, be mm -hmm. better to put something out perhaps to the um, to the exec yeah. team. <clears throat> Sorry, it's Rachel here that asked the question. I Hi, um, I was thinking Thank more you. about not just um, resources for the teaching, but to teach with. You know, has anybody bought like um, interactive dolls or um, have they gone out and bought specialist equipment or anything like that to teach the T level with? Um, at Santa College, we've invested in some VR equipment um, so we can promote the digital side of it in a lot more detail. Yeah. And the Cash Innovation team have um, Nursery View and Pregnancy View. I don't know, Janet, do you know much about those? Yeah, so those two programmes are available um, as VR, so students can look. The, on the pregnancy view, it is exactly what you might think it is, so the student can have that kind of um, virtual look at the developing baby um, right throughout gestation. And then in the nursery view, it's um, 
just the virtual nursery environment where, where you're, you're particularly looking at certain topics and it's then it explores things like health and safety risk assessment and so on so um, yeah they're, they're, they're nice um, they're nice resources I mean you can look at them from the website as kind of a um, 3D effect you know you can look at them as hard copies and read through of, of what's in them and that gives you an idea but they are good as they are yeah quite impressive but you've got to have a kit I guess and what's the website uh just the cash website so um oh, cash .org .uk. Yeah. yeah it's on there lovely thank any you any problems yeah any problems just let us know and we'll make sure you you um get access okay thanks janet Thanks a lot for that, Janet. I'm just going to quickly pull, pull, um, pull up Fiona's question here about having um, a tick box at the end of this session, for example, on the evaluation form about um, sharing email addresses if, if people consent. I'll ask my manager what, what the position of NCFE cash is um, in relation to, into, you know, GDPR and what we do there. Um, just going down the back of these questions. So we've got a question about meeting with people who is delivering both pathways. So I'll put that to the account execs and see, because they have the information about who's doing what. Thank you, Fiona. Thank you, Susie. Thank you, Nisa. Everybody's um, now wishing everybody the best for Christmas. Caroline, can you suggest where in the specs is a guide for marking on set formative assess assessments? Yeah, that's what Janet and I will will have a look at. Janet, that's a little piece of follow up work for us to do. Um, yeah, no problem. It's a good, yeah. good. It's a good question. It's a good question. Helen. It's excellent, isn't it? Yes, it's really interesting. Um, everybody's happy to collaborate. Thank you so much. Um, that's. I think that's the, all of the questions. I'm just looking at back up with Molly here. Um, anybody else got any final things they'd like to ask? Add open mic to anybody wonderful okay that's great thank you so much if you think of any questions afterwards um, please drop us an email thank you so much and thank you to janet you're a superstar as per no problem thank you helen thanks everyone thanks a lot i'll be sharing what's in the um the documents that people collect collated um in the breakout rooms uh, and of course the chat box with the questions and things in so Thanks ever so much. Stay safe. Thank you. Take care. Um, see you again. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Really useful. Thanks. Cool. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye now.